Remember, elliptic equations is almost like a special case for for the heat equation uh, x squared, except for uh, let me make it a little bit better at the x squared, except for two differences. One difference is that I'm going to add a f of x onto the right hand side. The other difference is I'm going to make this term equal to zero, which makes it equilibrium. So I'm going to make it equal to zero. We already discussed how to discretize this term. And do we know how do we add a function of x onto the discretization? Right, so we already discussed this term. If the left hand side is equal to zero, we get a vector of zeros. Which is which replaces d u d t d vector u d t equal to a matrix. Let me just call it A times the same vector u. So u one etc. to u n minus one. And if we have boundary conditions, we are going to be adding. Uh, we are going to be adding, let's say, a b one zero and b n minus one. Right, so how do we add this f of x onto this equation? Yeah? It's just a vector with uh, the sampling point of f. Exactly, it's just a vector of the samples of f at delta x, 2 delta x, 3 delta x, etc. So we are going to be discretizing f using the same way. f i is defined as f at i delta x. So now this, instead of an ODE, what we get? We get a linear equation, right? Ax plus, if you call this just a vector c, Ax plus Au plus c equal to 0. In MATLAB, how do you solve it? Backslash. Backslash, right? So, for example, in MATLAB, before I used a lot of, I used OD45, it went through thousands of time steps to solve this equation. But instead, I can just uh, solve the same equation using what? U equal to A backslash B, actually minus B. Right? Because I want to solve a u plus b equal to 0. Here I don't have any right hand side. Okay? If I close all, if I plot u, I get the same thing. Alright? So that's how we solve elliptic equations. Question? But only in the case that you're interested in the final set. Only when I'm interested in the final steady state, exactly, exactly. So that's what characterizes elliptic equations. I'll tell you a little bit like what's the difference between hyperbolic and uh, elliptic, uh, pa sorry, parabolic and elliptic equations. So, so when you don't have any time derivative, uh, you can solve the equation by backslash. And if I define some right hand side, let's say I have a f that is equal to once n minus 1 and 1, so I have a right hand side f is equal to constant 1. What I'm going to be solving is a u plus b plus f equal to 0, which makes minus b minus f the appropriate right hand side. If I plot you again, here's what I get. We get a slight curvature. Uh, Get a slight curvature. Is that what we should have? Uh, I think so. So the second order derivative plus one is equal to zero, which makes the second order derivative to be negative, right? Which makes the line go that way. All right. So that's what we should get. And if you increase f by a hundred 
you get something a lot more curvy. So that's, that's solving elliptic equations. And the difference between elliptic equations and the parabolic equations, so remember what we had uh, is the domain of dependence. So I'm not going to be talking about the meaning of elliptic and the parabolic because it relates to some analytical partial differential equation theory. But I'm just going to tell you in terms of behavior, how do they behave differently? So an uh, elliptic equation works in space and time. That's the physical interpretation of it. In, in, in mathematics, mathematicians may not care about the difference between space and time, right? Because for them, they are basically independent variables of a function. But when we talk about difference in different types of equations, we can think of, for parabolic equations, there is one special coordinate. We can just call it time. And that special coordinate has such a feature that if you introduce a perturbation to the differential equation, to the solution, either to the solution or to the, to the differential equation itself, at a particular space and time, that perturbation is going to change the solution not before that particular time, but after that particular time. Right? Physically, that makes sense. If you solve the heat equation, for example, if you add heat at a particular point in space at a particular point in time, the solution, the temperature field, is going to be changed not before you add that heat, but after you add that heat. And because heat, according to heat equation, it diffuses instantaneously. The, there is no speed of diffusion for heat. The solution is going to be changed immediately after the time you add the heat. The change is going to be very, very small, far away from the heat source, very recent after the addition, but it'll be different. So parabolic equation means that there exists such a special coordinate, a special independent variable, for which that it behaves like time. If you put up the equation at a particular point in time, the solution later is going to be different. Elliptic equation does not have that special coordinate. So that's why we usually call it x instead of t, we call it y. Think of just as two spatial dimensions. And for example, uh, the, the more general case of this is we also have two spatial dimensions, a couple of times the second order derivative in x and second order derivative in y. That equation does not have neither x nor y is a special coordinate. If you change, if you put a, a change in the, uh, in the equation, let's say plus, if you change the f at a particular x and y, the solution is not only going to be different after a particular y, but it's going to be different everywhere. It's going to change globally. So elliptic equations are the ones without that special time-like coordinate. And one on one is parabolic. Yeah, this is parabolic. This is elliptic. All right. So if you think physically, it's pretty easy to distinguish an elliptic equation. It's one basically without time, a steady state type of solution.